Police are adamant that she was not contacted, that no one came through that area, even though that track is popular in summer. It appears that in winter, and particularly conditions like now, where there's up to, they say, three feet of snow, uh, that uh, people just simply don't go through. In fact, uh, some people who are experienced trampers in that area told me this afternoon anyone who knows that backcountry wouldn't go there because of the av avalanche risk and the risk of falling. Pavlina Pazova and her partner Andre Peter set off to hike the Rootburn track on the 26th of July 2016. Prior to setting off, the couple had been advised not to tackle the route during winter as avalanches were common and it was known to be very difficult. However, there hadn't been any snowfall for a few weeks, so the couple decided to give it a shot anyway. A series of costly errors would lead to fatal consequences as their dream hike soon turned into the hike from hell. The details of their harrowing journey would not be released until a month after the pair set off when Pavlina was found alive, surviving in a cabin. What happened to the couple? This is Wrong Turn, the harrowing ordeal of Pavlina Pazova. But first, a brief word from today's sponsor. This week's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. I'll level with you guys, I'm an absolute terrible cook and I hate going shopping. I've actually been using HelloFresh for a few months now, even before they kindly decided to sponsor me, and it's honestly an incredible service. HelloFresh allows you to eat healthy, skip the dreaded trip to the shops, and allows you to make delicious home-cooked meals without all the time-consuming planning or prepping. So here I am cooking the pork penne. As someone who is terrible at cooking, you can see that the meals are easy to cook and take little to no time to make. This one took me around 20 minutes, and it honestly tasted amazing. The ingredients are quality, healthy and fresh, and with over 40 recipes to choose from weekly, you're bound to find something you like. For my viewers, they have kindly offered 65% off plus free shipping if you go to hellofresh.com and use code DISASTERTHON65. As some of you know, YouTube have demonetized a bit of my content recently, so sponsors like this really help support the channel, so thank you again to HelloFresh, and let's get on with today's video. Our story brings us to New Zealand. New Zealand is known for its picturesque landscape, and one of its most popular hikes is the Rootburn Track. The Rootburn Track is a world-famous hiking track found in the South Island of New Zealand. The hike is renowned for its crystal clear lakes, waterfalls, valleys, and beautiful mountains which link the two national parks of Mount Aspiring and Fordland together. The walk in total is 32 kilometers, which is the equivalent to 20 miles, and the highest point is 1,255 metres above sea level. The tracks are kept in excellent condition, making it simpler for tourists to explore some of New Zealand's most picturesque backcountry areas. Along the way, there are three huts which can be booked in advance. These are the Rootburn Flats Hut, the Rootburn Falls Hut, and the Lake Mackenzie Hut. The track's terrain is complex and difficult, which makes the walk especially harder in winter. Czech couple Pavlina Pazova and her partner Andre Peter arrived in New Zealand on February the 29th for a working holiday. Pavlina was described by her friends as a capable climber who could hike very long distances. They also said she was very practically skilled and at the time was 33 years old. Her partner Andre Peter was 27, but there is not a lot of information on the internet about him. The couple bounced around jobs such as picking apples at orchards and working in a museum. The two decided in July to walk the Rootburn track. They were advised against this due to weather conditions, but decided to do it anyway. The two started on Glenarchy Trailhead on the 26th of July, and on the first day of their hike, they reached Falls Hut, where they stayed for the night. The next morning, they set off towards Harris Saddle. In normal walking conditions, Harris Saddle is an hour's walk from Falls Hut, but snowfall was heavy, which made the trek near impossible. Five hours later, the couple were still trudging through the snow. They decided to carry on as they believed it would be more dangerous to turn back. Visibility was shocking and the pair took a wrong turn. After a few more hours of walking, they realized that they had taken a wrong turn and were lost. It was now 5 p.m. and the sun was going down. They had head torches, but could not see anything in front of them due to snow and fog. They decided that their best option was to stay put for the night and figure out the next step in the morning. 
However, the pair hadn't even packed a tent, so were forced to secure a flap to a rock and hunker down for the night. The next day, the two woke up freezing cold and completely blue. They called it quits and decided to go home, but again, the weather was horrific. It was hard to see where they were going, and to make things worse, they decided to take a shortcut which led them away from the track. The two were disorientated and couldn't think straight and just wanted to go home. This shortcut would prove to be a fatal mistake. The shortcut that the two took actually led them up the valley rather than down. After a short while, they realized this, so they tried to climb above the bush line to spot the path. Suddenly, during the climb, the snow gave way, which sent the two hurling down the mountain. Peter fell, seriously injuring himself in the process, and became tangled in branches and rocks. Pavlina tried desperately to save him, but her efforts were in vain, and sadly, Peter died. Obviously, she was distraught. She had just heard her partner take his last breath. It was cold and dark, and she had no idea where she was. She decided that she could look to his body for warmth for the night and stay put. When the sun rose, she set off in search of help, but ended up spending two more nights out in the freezing cold. Three days into her search, she eventually stumbled upon the Lake Mackenzie hut. In winter, the huts are often unoccupied and empty, so of course, it was locked. Pavlina smashed her way through a window in the back, and finally had shelter. The hut had a working fire with logs and food left over from previous occupiers. For now, she was safe. After eating and warming herself up by the fire, she eventually passed out and woke up to a terrifying reality. The weather was terrible, she was alone, and nobody knew she was there. In the hut, she found a working radio, but was unable to read the English instructions, so couldn't use it. With risks of avalanches, all she could do was wait. Rootburn track inspector Olaf Jansen said, given her experience and the avalanche risk, she decided it was best for her safety to remain in the hut, and that was the correct decision to make. She did, however, try to walk out of the hut on multiple occasions, but never got more than a few hundred meters. She had severe hypothermia, which made it difficult to walk, and she was weak from the experience. She stated, I made a few attempts to walk out of the hut, but my feet, the weather conditions, and the deep snow discouraged me from doing so. At the hut, I saw numerous avalanches coming down. Meanwhile back home, friends and family were becoming increasingly concerned about the couple's safety. Pavlina was known for writing on her social media a lot and updating her friends on her travels, but she had gone radio silent. Due to the couple not informing anyone of their plans though, it took weeks for them to raise the alarm. Pavlina's family then put out a Facebook status asking if anyone had seen her, which prompted her friends at the museum to report the two missing to the New Zealand police. The police started the search the same day and tracked their location down to the Rootburn track. Here, they found the car and knew that they must be close. After the car was located, the police sent a helicopter over the trail and when they were flying over the Lake Mackenzie hut, they saw someone jumping up and down in front of the hut and immediately recognized it was Pavlina. Both parties were overwhelmed. She had now been there for 24 days. Although she was weak and suffering with frostbite, she was found in good condition all things considering and was transported to the hospital where she made a full recovery. In a press conference, Pavlina spoke to the press and stated, as you can imagine, the last month was very harrowing for me and my and my partner's families. There is not enough space and it is not appropriate at this time to go into details, but I'd like to take this opportunity to briefly explain our actions. The conditions were extreme. We encountered heavy snowfall and low cloud, which contributed to our enforced overnight in the open, which affected our plans to reach the hut. In our attempt to reach the hut, the tragic accident happened when my partner fell and died. After his death, it took me another two nights out in the open before I reached safety of the hut. The recent heavy snows meant I was walking through waist deep snow and because all track markers were covered, I had to find my own way. I am aware we made a few mistakes, not leaving our intentions with somebody, not carrying a personal locator beacon and underestimating the winter conditions on the track. All these aspects contributed to our tragedy. Andre's body was eventually recovered and a coroner report concluded that he died from hypothermia, inadequate clothings and equipment and severe fatigue. 
His death was the result of the pair ignoring advice and making a series of poor decisions. After the harrowing ordeal, Pavlina returned home to be with her family. Sadly, if the couple had prepared properly and listened to warnings, they would still be alive. Regardless, Pavlina, if you come across this video, I'm sorry for what happened to you and Andre, and I hope that you're doing better today. A memorial plaque was put up for Andre Peter a few months after the incident. Hi everyone, just a little update from myself. If you see my community post, you can probably skip this, but I have created an Instagram so you guys can get to know me a bit more rather than just being a voice behind the screen. I'll be posting updates, behind the scenes bits, and just more about myself in general. Plus, if you want to see a picture of me or want to know what I look like, there is one on the gram, so feel free to follow me if you are on Instagram. When I reach a thousand followers, I'll do a Q&A on the page as well. I hope everyone is doing well and thank you for supporting the channel. That's all from me. Take care.